Hey everyone, I wanted to set up a quick tutorial on how to create a nice soft plaid material uh, that can be used for clothing. Pretty neat. And we're going to be using Substance Designer. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new graph. Name it whatever you like. I'm going to name mine soft plaid. And we're going to make it a 1024 by 1024 pattern, uh, sorry, graph. And we are going to make it a PBR metallic roughness graph. So as you can see, when we make our new graph, we start with a whole bunch of preset outputs. I'm actually gonna go through these and edit them a little bit. I'm gonna change the, uh, the color that is going into the roughness. I'm gonna change that to white. And that's gonna give us a rough texture to start with instead of a smooth texture, if it was black or gray, for example. I'm also going to get rid of the color that goes into the base color node to start with. We're gonna be doing a whole bunch of stuff with color, so we don't need anything going into there quite yet. And then I'm also going to go ahead and get rid of the ones that go into the height and the ambient occlusion nodes. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is create the actual pattern for the plaid. So we're going to create a tile generator. In the tile generator, I'm going to put the X amount to 10 and the Y amount to 1. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change its pattern to be a square. And we are going to also go down to the interstice values under size. And we're going to turn interstice X up to 0.5. I'm then going to go ahead and go down to position. And under global offset, I'm going to set the X to 0.025. And what this is going to do is it's going to be a full black bar and a full white bar at either end. Now we also need horizontal lines uh, to go perpendicular to the vertical ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the tile generator and then we're going to edit the values to get the same effect but with horizontal lines as opposed to vertical lines. So now we need to blend both of these tile generators together. So let's make a blend node uh, and we'll leave it on its default state of copy and we're going to lower the opacity a little bit. Now we're going to make a uniform color node to give this grid some color. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug it into a blend node we're then going to take the first blend node and put it into the opacity, and then the color will be plugged into the foreground. Don't worry too much about the color yet, we're gonna make it editable at the end. We're also gonna go ahead and give this a background color, and we'll just make it black for now. We can now plug that blended node into our base color. So let's go ahead and give this a little bit of texture. What we're gonna use is uh, a node called Cells 1. It kind of gives a kind of a rounded, fuzzy look. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another blend node and we're going to plug that in as the background. We're also going to plug the blend node that has the color into uh, the foreground of this blend node. The next thing we have to do is make sure that the Cells node actually is converted to color rather than grayscale in order to correctly work with this blend node. To do that, I like to create simply a gradient map node and then that will convert it for us. So we can simply take that node and put it into our base color. Now we're going to take the cells texture and we're going to plug it into the normal node. From here, we can also make a normal to height node and we can grab that normal node and plug it into the height node. And then we can plug that into the height output. From here, we can also grab a ambient occlusion from height node, and we can grab the normal from height and plug it into that node, and then plug that into the ambient occlusion output. Once we do that, we'll see our preview in 3D. We're going to up the scale of the cells node a little bit, just to you know fill in a little bit more of those black gaps and make it look a little more fuzzy and friendly. So now I also want the cells texture to affect the roughness a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a levels node. I'm gonna plug the cells into the levels and then the levels into the roughness. That way we can use the levels node to adjust how rough and how smooth parts of the fuzz should be. At this point, we have a pretty good looking plaid material. We're gonna go a couple steps further though. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add some uh, dirt slash mud to this material. And we're gonna do that by starting with a grunge map. We're going to give that grunge map a little bit more of a variation by adding a clouds three node and then blending them together and setting that blend mode to multiply. Now we're going to give our mud texture some color so we can plug a uniform color node into a blend node. And then we can grab the blend node of the mud texture and plug it into the opacity. 
Okay, the next thing we're going to do is create another blend node. And we're going to use this one to blend the mud texture into the uh, pattern color that we have at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the mud blend and we're going to plug it in as the foreground and the grid blend we're going to plug in as the background. And as we can see on our 3D model here, it's actually looking pretty awesome. It looks like the material just got dirty. So we're going to change the color a bit. We'll just change it to kind of a muddy brown. So we also want this mud texture to really change the roughness where the mud is hitting, right? Because mud is smooth and we want that to be reflected. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a blend node. We're going to put the original roughness, which is that levels node that is coming from the cells. And we're going to put that in as the background. We're then going to put the mud opacity in as the foreground, but we're also going to put it in as the opacity because we only want it to affect the parts that the mud is hitting. And as you can see, especially in the right light, the mud really shows up quite a bit different than the rest of the texture. So the next thing we're going to do is the pretty much the same as what we did with the roughness, except we're going to do it with the normal map as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to blend the mud and the cells together before we hit the normal map. Now we're going to expose some of these parameters so that we can change them uh, in the editor. Like let's say we import this into Unity and we want to change it in the inspector. We can do that. So uh, we're going to click on uh, the uniform color for the actual grid of the plaid pattern. And then where output color is on the right, we're going to click that. We're going to hit expose and we're going to give it a name. We're just call it plaid underscore color. We're also going to do the exact same thing for the background of the grid. We're also going to expose a parameter for the color of the mud. I'm also going to double click any empty space on my graph to see these properties now because I can't actually edit them in the nodes since they're exposed properties. Now I have to double click in on an empty part of the graph and uh, go into where they have been uh, set as exposed parameters. I'm going to change the labels to give them proper names. So all of these material properties will now show up uh, right in the inspector if you import it into Unity. Uh, you can also import it into Unreal with the same results. And just like that, we have an awesome material that we can use in our games. Um, if you like this video, feel free to subscribe. And until next time, keep learning.